A while back, we had some drivability issues with a vehicle here in the shop. It would run and drive great, but after idling at a stoplight, it would start to run rough. When we tried to accelerate, we'd experience a lean backfire through the intake, and then it'd just run really rich. Sometimes it even shot fuel straight out of the carburetor vents. After shutdown, it wanted to sit for several hours before starting again. It wasn't long before we began getting calls from others having the same concern. Most of the blame was thrown at the carburetors. However, with some time and dedication on our part, we found that the fuel itself was the cause of our problems. Welcome to Prestige Motorsports. I'm Eric Labore, and today I'm going to show you what was happening and what we've done to fix it. This is a 1960 Chevy Impala owned by one of our local customers. The car is a street cruiser with a mild 350 engine. It's running a mechanical fuel pump and a four barrel carburetor. Our customer contacted us because the car would start and drive fine, but after turning the engine off, it wouldn't start again. After sitting for an hour or two, that engine would fire right up and run fine. This has become an extremely common issue lately, so we had a good idea where to start. It was our suspicion that the fuel system was experiencing vapor lock. To confirm this, we installed a clear hose from the fuel pump to the carburetor inlet. You can see that the hose is filled with fuel and there's no air bubbles present. We let the engine idle with the hood open for about 15 minutes. Once the engine compartment starts to heat up, the fuel begins to boil. You can see the air bubbles starting to form. When the cooling fans kick on, hot air passes across the hose and intensifies the effect until fuel is only filling a portion of the line. Most of the fuel is turned into vapor from the normal heat of the engine, causing vapor lock. The temperature of the line is only 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Fuel blends that you find today can boil at temperatures as low as 100 degrees. This was a simple test that was done with the hood open and an ambient temp of about 80 degrees. Just think about what's happening when you idle down after a nice highway cruise on a 90 degree day. The underhood temps are going to be much higher. So what can you do to fix it? Well, one way is to install this in-tank electric fuel pump system from Aeromotive. Now we prefer this method for two reasons. First, this is a, a return system. So the excess fuel is returned back to the fuel tank where it can cool down. A deadhead or a turnless system keeps the fuel in the line allowing it to soak up heat. Second, if you decide to switch to fuel injection in the future, you already have everything you need for fuel supply already in place. You simply change out the pressure regulator spring and you're ready to go. To install the kit we begin by dropping the fuel tank. And some vehicles will allow you to access the top of the tank through an access panel in the trunk but on this particular one we had to drop the tank. Once the tank is out, we assess the best place to mount the pump. Now we have a side mounted sending unit for the fuel gauge so we removed that and laid it on top of the tank so we could see where it would interfere with the pump. Next we cleaned up the outside of the tank and then marked the location of, for our fuel pump. And we used a divider described the center of the hole and then marked it with a center punch. The hole saw is used to cut a hole in the top of the tank. Now the pilot hole is drilled through and then we flip the tank upside down to minimize any shavings inside of the tank when the remainder of the hole is cut out. After the hole is cut out, we use the die grinder and a sanding roll to clean up the sharp edges. The kit comes with a drill template to make holes for the mounting studs. So we drilled two pilot holes to hold the template in place, and you can either use bolts or drill bits to hold the template, and then drill the remainder of the holes. There's a split ring with studs that slips into the tank and then comes up through the mounting holes. The outer foam seal is used to hold that ring into place. Now this kit is a universal fit, so we had to measure our tank depth so we knew how tall to make the pump reservoir. Now this foam reservoir is cut one inch taller than the tank, so the foam is held in place by a crushed fit. The 
pump holder also has to be measured so the pickup is near the bottom of the reservoir. And once the pump position is marked, we trim the excess off the bracket. Wiring and hose connections are next, and then the pump is secured to the bracket with two hose clamps. With everything connected to the pump and secured to the bracket, we can install the assembly into the fuel tank. Once the nuts are installed, the foam seal is crushed down around the corrugated tank and seals off the installation. And keep in mind that you may need to shim the fuel tank down to add clearance for the fuel connections that are now on top of the tank. This return system from Aeromotive has cured all of the fuel vapor issues we've run into. However, we understand that it may not be an option for everybody. So here are a few pointers if you are using a mechanical pump. First, stay away from steel lines. They offer no insulation from heat. If you can, use black nylon braided fuel hose and make sure your lines are routed away from any heat sources like coolant hoses and exhaust. You can install an inline electric pump to pressurize the fuel up to the inlet side of the mechanical pump. Now increasing pressure also raises the boiling point. But keep in mind, this does nothing for the low pressure side of the pump. And in addition, if you're not returning the excess fuel back to the tank, you're still allowing it to soak up heat before it reaches the carburetor. And finally, the mechanical pump itself is attached to the engine, and it can reach temperatures well above the boiling point of the fuel. So if you have to use a mechanical pump, try to locate a station near you that provides ethanol-free blends. Ethanol blends typically have a lower boiling point. I'm Eric Labor with Prestige Motorsports. I hope this Hardcore Tech episode has fueled some ideas on how to cool the frustrations of vapor lock in your hot rod.